Hi, welcome to lesson 3.1, Chromosomes and Alleles. We're going to be modeling chromosomes with Trewibbles. My name is Laura McGinty. I am a Ballard High School biology teacher here in the Seattle Public Schools. Welcome back, and it's good to see you again. To use this PowerPoint in this video, first and foremost, make sure that you're working at your own pace. Do what is best for you in this case. Your health and your family come first always before this. Uh, if possible, uh, when you are going through the activities, you'll find it helpful sometimes to go through this stuff with a friend. Uh, communicate through text, uh, email, call if you have questions, share those ideas. It's also going to be helpful to have a scrap piece of paper or a notebook, a pencil or pen to record down any of those questions or ideas that you have as you're going through. You'll also need for this particular lesson, you will need your genetics vocabulary sheet if you have it, and I'll get to that in a little bit more detail here in a second. Go through the slides one at a time. Take your time to explore the images, any links that are there. For the video, pause the video whenever you need to. Repeat sections as often as necessary for you. If you do come across something that you're not sure about or that you don't understand, take note of the slide that it's on or the timestamp and uh, go through the remainder of the video or PowerPoint. If you come to the end of this, and you still have a question or there's still some confusion about a, a topic, then reach out to your teacher and ask that question. You can also ask somebody in your household, uh, reach out to a peer through text, email, call them. Uh, when you do finish, though, consider sharing what you've learned with someone in your household or with a friend uh, through text, email, or again, call them and explain your thinking. This is a really great way to help you retain that information and help make sense of it. Uh, through this process. There are four goals with this particular lesson. After the lesson, you should be able to compare and contrast homologous chromosomes, should be able to describe, <clears throat> excuse me, genotypes using the terms homozygous and heterozygous, explain how dominant and recessive alleles produce traits or phenotypes, and then model trewibble chromosomes and how genotype produces phenotype. This lesson is designed to take about two days, so that pacing is going to be really important for you. Make sure that you do what is necessary to take care of yourself during this process. This is a little bit of a larger lesson. The first thing that you're gonna need here is your vocabulary. So this is part one. You have your genetics vocab sheet that was handed out uh, some time ago. If you don't have that vocabulary sheet, you might want to take notes on a scrap piece of paper or in a notebook. The section that we are on for the genetics vocabulary is Inheritance Lesson 3.1. First and foremost, we need to understand that chromosomes come in pairs. In the karyotype in this image, we have human chromosomes. You can see that there are 23 pairs. They're matching chromosomes, also known as homologs or homologous chromosomes. There's one maternal or one from your mother, and another is the paternal chromosome or one from the father. You can see here that this is more clearly distinguished with the colors. The pink represents the chromosomes from the mother. The blue represents the chromosomes from the father. Again, two versions of that chromosome, so those chromosomes come in pairs. What we see is there's going to be the chromosome here from the mother and the exact same chromosome, the pair, that comes from the father. Two versions of that same chromosome. We see an example of this specifically with chromosome 11. Chromosome 11 is where we're going to find sick, the trait of sickle cell anemia, so those genes that are found on that chromosome are the same genes as you would find from the mother version and the father version. So there's the maternal chromosome with the sickle cell anemia gene and the paternal chromosome from, uh, with the sickle cell anemia gene. Homologous pairs have the same genes on them, but they're not always identical genes because these are alleles. The alleles can be different. For example, we have the chromosome from a mother has the allele for the non-functional hemoglobin B, which is going to be the sickled cell uh, disease. 
from the father, the allele is for the functional hemoglobin, so you can see that those are round, healthy red blood cells. So again, homologous pairs have the same genes, but the genes aren't always the same because we have gene versions or alleles. So how do, uh, how do the alleles from homologous chromosomes produce the traits that we see? So to look at this, we're going to go back to our bioflower example that we saw previously. Take a look at the image below here and identify how many red alleles are necessary to produce a red flower. You can see that if you looked at these, you can see that it's one. You only need one red allele to produce the red flower. And the red is the functional allele. So only one is necessary. This one, we have two red alleles. And here we have a red and a blue, which indicates the red flower characteristic. So only one is necessary. However, the blue alleles to produce a blue flower, you're going to need two blue alleles here. The blue is a non-functional allele. The combination of those alleles is the genotype, and it's going to determine the observed characteristics or the phenotype. When we have a combination of the alleles, they're going to be either homozygous or heterozygous. The homozygous is when we have two alleles that are the same that's going to be two, uh, two reds or two blues. That's a homozygous genotype. When you have a heterozygous genotype, that's when you have two alleles that are different. So a red allele and a blue allele. So if we go back, we can see here we have two reds. So this would be homozygous. We have two blue. That would be homozygous. The one in the middle is a red and a blue. So that is heterozygous. When you see only one allele that is necessary for the phenotype to be observed, scientists call this a dominant allele. When two alleles are necessary for the phenotype to be seen, that's a recessive allele. So again, one allele is needed to see the phenotype. Dominant, two alleles necessary for the phenotype, that's recessive. We need to be careful with the word dominant, though, because oftentimes people mistaken it for meaning stronger or better. That's not necessarily the case. The case here is that you only need one of the alleles to be present for that phenotype to be observed. When we represent alleles, we're going to represent them with letters. We use the capital letter to represent the dominant allele and we use the lowercase letter to represent the recessive allele. You'll note here that both of these are the letter R. Uh, usually the first letter of the word is going to be what represents the dominant trait, typically. Not always, but uh, typically that's going to be the case. So to review, the capital letter represents the dominant allele, lowercase letter represents the recessive allele. The combination of these alleles determines the observed trait. Combination of alleles determines phenotype. So looking across the top, we have our chromosome combination. We have a big R and a big R. The allele combination or the genotype is capital R, capital R, or big R, big R. The phenotype or observed characteristic then is red. This is a homozygous uh, allele here. We have a heterozygous, where we have a capital R and a lowercase r, r and it, since, the, since it is dominant, we only need one present. That means that the flower is going to be red. Here we have a homozygous recessive, so we have two recessive genes. Uh, the allele combination is two little r's, or two lowercase r's. That means our flower is going to be blue. Now we're ready for part two. Take the vocabulary that we just learned about, and we're going to apply that with modeling chromosomes with terwibbles. To do that, we need to know what a terwibble is. So a terwibble, a terwibble is a fictional character that has six chromosomes or three pairs of uh, chromosomes. So six chromosomes total, three pairs. On these chromosomes are genes for different traits. Each terwibble is going to have two alleles for each trait. And we're going to look at a quick example pair here. First, we're going to look at the gene for fur color. 
The capital G, remember, represents the dominant trait that is going to be for green fur. The dominant, uh, sorry, the dominant trait for green fur is the capital G. For the yellow fur, it's a lowercase g, so that means that yellow is a recessive trait. For curly versus straight, curly fur is going to be represented with a capital F, and the lowercase f is for straight fur, which is going to be the recessive trait. So let's look at all six of these. We've already introduced the G and the F, green fur versus yellow fur, curly fur versus straight fur. In this particular case, we have the heterozygous uh, allele, capital G, lowercase g, since there's one dominant present in each of those, that means that the green and curly is represented here. You can see that pop up down here. Next, we're going to look at the eye size. Capital B represents big eyes, lowercase b represents small eyes. In this case, we have one capital B, so we're going to have big eyes. The true wibble also has a gene for the length of eyelashes. Long eyelashes is the dominant trait, short eyelashes is recessive, so this true wibble has long eyelashes. Next, we go to leg length. Uh, the capital L represents long legs, lowercase l, which is the recessive, represents short legs. We have our legs there. And then lastly, uh, we're going to have the nose. Capital N represents the round nose. It's the dominant trait for a round nose. Lowercase n is the recessive trait for a triangle nose. This one has a little round nose. So. At this point, we're going to look at the steps of modeling our chromosomes. Part A is going to be the actual construction of the chromosomes. You're going to create those three pairs of chromosomes for a total of six. Part B, you're going to label the genes on those chromosomes. So determine which alleles come from each parent and label them. Part C is reviewing the DNA replication. So use those chromosomes uh, that you set aside to model that DNA replication. And then part D is the analysis. Complete the table to identify the genotype and phenotype of your particular cherwibble. Importantly, please save those chromosomes for the next activity. We're going to watch this video for a demo uh, of modeling chromosomes. Hi, my name is Miss Fox and I am a biology teacher at Lincoln High School and today I'm going to share with you some information about how to do 3.1 modeling chromosomes in Trewibbles. And the very first step you'll need to do is gather your materials to construct your chromosomes. You need two different colors of paper. You can use white paper and then some other maybe newspaper or maybe a scratch paper that came in the mail. It doesn't have to be um, uh, really nice paper just has to be two different colors or if you don't have in different colors of paper you can also just uh, use two white pieces of paper and then color them at the end to just note their uh, difference in colors. You'll also need um, some scissors. I couldn't find scissors so I have my kitchen shears and then I also have a pen um, or something to write with and I also have a coin just a penny that I can um, use during this activity. So the very first step you're going to do, if you're following along on 3.1, is we are going to construct the chromosomes. And the first step is we're going to make a cut lengthwise right in half of one of the colors. So you're going to have two long pieces of paper, as so. The next step, you will actually cut them again, so you end up having four long pieces of paper. So here I have four long pieces of paper in my hand. And I am going to, um, two of these are going to be my long chromosomes. I'm going to just set those down here. And then these other two, I'm going to actually cut a little bit. Um, I'm going to cut about one third down so I can make some medium chromosomes and some sh um, short chromosomes. So I'm going to cut about one third down 
So I end up with some medium chromosomes and some short chromosomes. And so now I have um, two longs, two mediums, and two shorts of one color. You are going to do the same exact process with the second color. So you'll cut down the middle. And you'll cut again so you can get a total of four chromosomes. And so two of them will stay the same as long chromosomes. And then two of them are going to be my short chromosomes and my medium chromosomes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut about two thirds down. And so I have two short chromosomes, or two medium chromosomes, and two short chromosomes. So I should have a total of four long chromosomes, and these are going to be, the reason we're using two different colors is we're looking at two different parents. This is parent one and parent two. You should have four medium chromosomes, one from each parent, and you should have four short chromosomes, one from each parent. And so um, letter F, actually on number one, says you're going to set half of your strips aside, what we're going to use later in part C. So I'm going to take one of each. Oops. I'm going to take these three and set them aside. I'm also going to take one long orange, one medium orange, and one small orange and set those aside. So I should have two longs, two different colors, two mediums, two different colors, and two small, two different colors. And these, again, the reason we're using two different colors is to note that the chromosomes in the Cherwibble came from two different parents. And so this could come from parent one and this could come from parent two, so two different colors. So the next step is we're going to label genes on the chromosomes, and that is part B um, that we're going to look at. And um, to do this, we are going to use our pen and our penny. And we're going to do a, a system that, um, that is very similar to what scientists do. We are going to label them um, using capital letters, which is a dominant allele, and lowercase letter, which is a lowercase um, a lowercase letter which is a recessive allele. And so to do this we're going to take our coin and um, the long chromosomes um, in the drawings are going to have uh, the trait for fur color and you'll notice that there's two uh, on the second page you'll notice there's two um, colors. You can have a green cherwibble or you can have a yellow cherwibble. And if you have a dominant allele, that's um, a big G, that's going to be a green dribble. And if you have a uh, lowercase g, a little g, that's going to be a yellow dribble. So I'm going to take my penny, and I'm going to start with one of my parents. I'm going to start with the yellow. I'm just going to go ahead and flip my coin. If I get a heads, it will be capital G. And if I have a uh, tails, it will be a lowercase g. And I got a tails. So on here, I'm going to just, on the very top here, I'm going to write a little g, and we know that the allele is little g, um, but that actually shows the trait of ye a yellow uh, cherwibble. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for the other parent, I'm gonna flip my coin, and I got heads, so I'm going to do a big G. So here I have um, a big G and a little g. Um, together, you, and, um, later, you will actually note which, um, what the trait will be for these two alleles. But right now, just go ahead and write them down. Uh, we'll do the next one is uh, fur type. You can have curly fur or straight fur. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my coin again. And I got tails. So that is a little f. I'm going to put it on the bottom here. And that is going to show uh, straight fur. And then I'm going to do that again with my orange chromosome. Flip my coin. I got tails again, so I'm going to have a little F, and that again will be uh, straight fur. So this is how I'm going to label my chromosomes. Um, and you will do the same process um, to go through 
Uh, the medium chromosome will have um, alleles for eye type, so you can have big eyes or small eyes, um, and the uh, eyelash length, so long eyelashes versus sh uh, short eyelashes. So you'll do that as well. And then the third chromosome, which is the short chromosome, you're going to actually um, do the alleles N, so big N is round nose and little n uh, is triangle nose, and then um, leg length will be long legs is big L, and short legs is little l, and you'll add those um, on your chromosomes. Um, the next step that you'll do is you will um, lay out your chromosomes, and part C says, it says reviewing DNA replication, and it says that you are going to pull out your other chromosomes that you had you set aside, you're going to pull those out and model DNA replication. So I'm going to match this orange chromosome, I'm going to make a copy of it. So to make a copy of it, I will need to write down the same alleles on here. So if I'm going to make a copy of that, I'll model that, then I'll put a big G and little f. So notice I made a copy. So here is my chromosome, my, one of my long chromosomes from one parent, and these are copies of each other. So I'll set that down, and I'll do the same for um, the yellow and all the rest of them. When you get to part D, you will look at your combination of chromosomes and write down what is the trait that you will observe based on the combination of alleles from these two chromosomes. Thank you, I hope this was helpful, and uh, enjoy the rest of this unit. Welcome back from the modeling uh, exercise. We're gonna do a check for understanding and talk about what our next steps are. At this point, we've gone through vocabulary. You've seen how the modeling is supposed to go. Compare and contrast homologous chromosomes was our first goal. Our second goal was to be able to describe genotypes using the terms homozygous and heterozygous. Our third goal was to be able to explain how dominant and recessive alleles produce those traits, which are also known as phenotypes. And then we're supposed to model Trewibble chromosomes and show how genotypes produces phenotypes. Our next steps, if you haven't already done this, is to complete the modeling chromosomes with Trewibbles. Then consider answering the optional modeling chromosomes review questions to help you practice some of the concepts and vocabulary. Uh, and then finally, make an entry in your learning tracking tool titled Chromosomes and Alleles. Really appreciate all the hard work that you've been putting into this. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to our next opportunities.